All right, what's up, everybody? Can y'all hear me? Test, test. Let's see if I can hear me. Can y'all hear me coming in loud and clear? I am on my laptop, so it's going to sound a little different, obviously. Just making sure y'all can hear me. Uh, that's our for spy touch of DD band. Somebody said the DD bands were off on the bot. I am traveling, so it could be a, it could be that the risk intervals are getting updated on my um, on my mobile machine. But double check. Good morning, everybody. All right, so yeah. Glad you found a cable. Yeah, I was digging through the, the drawers of, um, we're staying at uh, Nicole's family's house. So I'm digging through the drawers looking for a USB-C cable um, that plugs in my second monitor, which is good. It's so much easy. It's hard to stream with just a laptop because you have to have the controls and all that. But now it's all good. I like it. Okay. All right, we good, you guys hear us? All right, pull along up. Let me get, oh, let me get the printing map up in here. Yeah, I'll give a little opening read. So Rocket Scooter, everybody, if it's your first time here, uh, the platform at 9.30 in the morning gives um, an, a generated layout on your charts. It's completely automated. Um, what our, what our um, bots and algorithms do is they dig through all the options data and it extracts from it what it believes are market maker dealer positions, which are basically the sell side of the market. And so when you can divide up the actual uh, positions into people trading against the house, if you think of it like that, instead of traders trading against each other, uh, you can see where real bulls and real bears are positioned. So where the house is kind of neutralized in the middle. Um, so Rockets here can determine every morning if a stock or an index or anything is bullish or not. Uh, the S&P, for instance, opened today with a read. The read, it says bull, long, and up, and all three things are pointing up. So what those things mean are, we've opened in the bull side of positioning, which is a 420 support. We've opened on the long side of hedging against dealer options, which is 420 and a half. Uh, and then we're way above monthly. Um, and there's another balance point for monthlies, which is much lower than that. So when all things are lined up this way, the market's really long and strong, and you can see we're in a gap and go situation right now. Um, positions don't lie, right? Positions show you the sum of everyone's homework. And so with the S&P, uh, there is definitely all, all data is pointing up. So this is a really nice, strong open. Uh, if I were to do, you know, Adam and I are probably on the same page here. Uh, I do want to wait for a pullback for me to dig into any substantial long, as I believe the rallies can keep going. Uh, any opening scalp like this, I'm going to scalp to some, you know, very, like, essentially I would get like a, a move to a, I mean, basically a target. I'm not done doing my analysis because I'm, I'm kind of mobile, but I would I would trade it to a target, like a gap fill or something, and probably get out of the scalp. I'd want to see that hedge pressure as support. So typically what we do in bull markets is we like to find those hedge pressure numbers and let them be support uh, for us to get into an open uh, position. So for instance, today with 420 and a half on the S&P, that is, that is a clear as day support for like the end of the day or middle of the day sort of run. So if we have any pullback, it's likely to hold 420 and a half because everything's nice and strong. Now, there is some information that comes through uh, for all the other stocks as well. And we look and analyze how strong the gap is across the stock market, not just the index. So today we have a number called resilience, which is a strength of the gap, for instance. So a gap is when you open higher or lower than the previous day. Uh, so to, you know, obviously every morning you gap in one direction today, we gapped up and the S and P there's a number, uh, the resilience number, which shows the strength of it is actually very weak. So this actually might pull us back to try to fill the gap today. And I think that's going to be nice for us to see that. So, um, I'm not looking to chase this long to the upside unless that number on rocket scooter goes positive. Um, the S&P and NASDAQ are both negative at this point, which does mean that this likely is to fade uh, over the course of the morning. So this is a false breakout to the upside. And just I usually give it like a minute or two to stabilize. And if those numbers pull back, then we're likely to pull back as well. And that's as quick as my analysis goes. Every morning I do my analysis. It's, it takes about a minute or two, and I already know how the rest of the day is ready to play out. What's up, Ashton? Go ahead. I see he has his hand raised. Can you guys hear me? I'm sorry, I'm on spaces too. I'm trying to be all remote and mobile here. Can you hear me? Yeah, likely irrational for the whole day. Can you guys hear me? Okay, cool. 
Um, looks like before we have bull long ups across the board with negative resilience. This is a this is an easy, easy, easy play. Uh, Three forty eight pullback on QQQ. So today we're gonna it's a gap and gap and fade today. Um, Russell pushing higher. Okay, let's look in. Okay, sorry, I'm a little scattered trying to get everything together. All right, let's make sure we got our gaps marked for the other. So it's a fade. It's probably a fade day today as long as resilience is negative. Yeah, so this is a pullback day today. Unless resilience rescues itself. You'll see that. How far are we on these, on these gap ups? Are we anywhere close? Oh, we, did, we do have a gap to the upside as well. Okay, so what I'm doing is going through the marking. This is a practice everybody needs to do. You always need to make sure you have all your unfilled gaps marked. This is, you know, we're the, we're the folks that really push... Uh, a lot of information out there related to gaps more than anything. They're one of the most important. Open and close is the most important pivots of the day. There's no doubt about that. So we're always reminding people that, you know, when you get into learning trading, there's a million things you can start learning. There's nothing better than learning gap mechanics right out the door. It's one of the most important things you can learn in techni any technical analysis or anything um, that you learn anywhere. Always, 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 at least at minimum needs to teach you about how, how this gapping process works. So as you see, we already are filling the gap uh, and there's a fake out. Resilience is negative. We are coming down today. Do you guys see that? Let's see how that works. Pretty simple. The S&P resilience is, is looking a little booty today. So it's likely to be a gap and fade situation. Oh, I didn't save my data. Yeah, so the market is irrational. After you break up your DD band, that's correct. So the market's likely to fade back a little bit of this today. If that resilience number tanks like that, it's likely to pull back. It's going to be hard for me to trade. With lack of monitors. So I'm just going to do full screen today. So uh, let me get my drawing tool really quick. So does everybody see how this is kind of laying out right now? Uh, it looks like we're likely to fade at least down to there and then probably support. So this could be like on the daily candle. So let me get my job tool really quick. I don't have that on my monitor. I mean, on my, uh, oh, dang it. Well, I thought I always had my, my pencil here. Okay, so let me just move up my mouse. So typically like, um, that's so weird because I know I always have my drawing tools on here. Okay, I don't. So just use your imagination. So basically today is going to be likely be a candle with the stem at the top. Like, uh, I don't know what they call them, inverted hammers or something. I hate, I hate candle stick drawing talk. But you know that, what's the name of the candle where like you basically trade up and then trade all the way down, but it doesn't go red. It's basically like a green candle with like a little, it's gonna look like a lamp stand without a lamp shade, basically like that. Can you, can you visualize what I'm, you visualize what I'm trying, to, trying to say? So essentially whatever we get to um, is likely to fade, but not fill the gap. Not a doji, not a doji. Um, so essentially whatever breakout we get, it's gonna immediately fade, but not fill this gap. It's gonna support hedge pressure. So if you zoom out, ha like a hammer, I guess, yeah. And it's gonna be green as well. <laughs> I 
There we go. I, I never learned these things. You should have learned these things. They're silly. Candle. They mean absolutely. They, you know, pardon my French, but they, they mean absolute dick. It's a complete waste of your time. But people learn them, so let's reference them. Inverted hammer candle. That's the word I'm looking for. Okay. No, I was right. Open image. And you tab. There we go. All right, this thing. This thing right here. Don't ever spend, let me tell you guys, don't ever, 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 ever spend your time looking at anything like this. Don't ever waste your time learning shapes and patterns for stock market. You're going to get nowhere. You're going to learn a bunch of useless stuff that's all going to be good. The only time this is good is like now to reference it. Hey guys, remember that candle shape thing? It's probably going to look like this just so you can visualize it. But there's a million names. They do absolutely nothing for analysis. I promise you. Trust me on that. Candles mean nothing. You know, not, yeah. They were, they came from Japan and rice and grain trading on a daily basis. They were never meant to be interpreted intraday. I agree. With, I agree with Will. They're, they're useful in a sense of humans naturally look for patterns and things. That's how your biology is. You're, you recognize faces like there's a whole, I forget the name of it, paradoxal. There's a, I can't ever pronounce that word. There's a word that, that says something. Every, every time you look at something, your brain is trying to see if that's a face or not. The AI in your brain. It's how babies recognize their mother and things like that immediately. So you're always trying to look for patterns and your brain is wired to look for patterns. So it was like a precursor to trying to find patterns in the stock market. Paradoxal. There you go. Louis, Louis hit it. That's the word. Um, was it by a second right? So it doesn't like the reason I say it doesn't work for anything is that it, it works at just giving you an idea of what something's going to look like. It doesn't work at predicting what the market is like. Okay, this doji means breakout up. This this camera means breakout down. All it, it doesn't show you much information other than the open, close, high, and low of the day. It's missing some important information like what it did throughout the day, or was it volatile throughout the day. Or the inch it's way there and it just way down. There's a lot of information missing in a daily candle, right? That just shows you four data points. It ignores all the rest of the day, right? So when you're trying to do the kind of analysis, the more you zoom in to get more of that information, the more messy it is, as William had said. So it's kind of like this double-edged sword. How this kind of analysis works. Um, the pat and, and then makes the big leap of the past shape. Or just shape like the past implies the future, which we know isn't true. So, in any any particular way, um, the the candle stick has no meaning itself. It's arbitrarily set by your choice. Up here, you can change where those four reference points are by changing the center here. So, anyways, um, we are going to fade back up. The wolf's asking the question. Hold on. people reading tea leaves yeah so i promise you guys don't waste any time at all trying to learn chart patterns like flags and wedges and pennants like head and shoulders don't learn any of that stuff it's not going to do anything for your win rate of trading it is a lot of effort for a neutral addition to your tool set it's not bad. It's just not good. It's it, it's meaningless. So it'll add complexity without additional benefit. So there's no reward for the, the time investment, I promise. Like when you start to see things forming, it doesn't matter. You're going to read it day by day. Day by day, you're going to see what the positions are and what the data is. Does everybody see clearly why this is pulling back? We're going to interact with Hedge Fisher. Head and Shoulders is just a great name for a dandruff shampoo. I agree. When you spend your time learning that kind of stuff, you're basically learning where people started 65 years ago, 70 years ago. When technical analysis and chart reading became like this mainstream thing in the 60s and 70s, 
once computers started becoming active, as people started putting charts in newspapers and things like that, traders were very interested in trying to make sense of it, trying to find some mathematical sensibility to it. Even if there was a case for it back in the day, the algorithms these days are such, the sophistication is just so over the top. Not com computerized trading in the main day, mainstream today uses no charting whatsoever. Their order flow, reading, liquidity measuring robots that know nothing about what the chart looks like. So even if it was a thing back then to sell books, like here, look at this chart, look at this pattern. When things consolidate, sometimes they break up and let's show you every single time they break up and say, look, this pattern means it breaks up. You ignore half the time when it breaks down and then you can sell a book, right? And that's exactly what the gurus back then did. And it's sad because, you know, there's it, it obtains a cult-like following, right? You give people a book, you prey on their desperation. The book solves their problems. It shows some kind of future for them. And, and then people love what you say based on whatever, despite no evidence of it actually working. It kind of sounds like a religion, doesn't it? So not a religion, but like a, a cult. That's a good way to put it. A cult. TA was a cult when it first started. So you give people, like they follow it blindly, right? And despite it not working for them, it stuck around. And so when people, it doesn't work for them, they still believe it does because some book told them it should. 30, 40 years ago. And so TA works when a trader is good, right? Any kind of analysis works though, when a trader is good, but the analysis doesn't do any of the heavy lifting at all. It does not do the work for you. It doesn't tell you where to get in, where the manager is, nothing. And therefore you can create any kind of analysis and therefore it should work. Anything should technically work if you're good. So the endless variety of choices just makes it hard. And, but I'll just tell you, despite that, like, you know, different types of momentum analysis and things do actually work, but on a larger term scale, the more you zoom in, it's going to be noise. So really good technical indicators work on a more medium to longer term basis, you know, like daily candles or at least weekly candles, hourly candles, not like minutes and minute. You're going to have, you're trading a lot of noise, minutes and minute, or even using tick charts. If you somebody using TA on a tick chart, is 100% garbage that by itself is like like a maniac's brain would think like that you're literally just trying to find uh patterns and noise you're like russell crowe and the beautiful mind movie following pigeons around trying to extract an algorithm how they eat bird seed off the ground remember that he drove himself crazy doing that you're trading noise anything under an hour chart with momentum, you're likely going to get a lot of noise. RSI is the best technical indicator. It probably is one of the best non-volume ones. On momentum basis, anything related to um, finding higher highs or lower lows, the RSI, that's what it does. It's not a terrible one. It's probably one of the best ones, and it's very simple how it's constructed, which is why I like it. So in reality, everything is good. TA helps a lot when swinging. Yeah, it's great. The, the more you zoom out, the less noise it is. Because what happens is throughout the day, what happens if you get like one crazy candle or one really strong tweet or something, market shoves one way or the other. Nobody's indicators will react to that. Anything that's looking at the history of price will have a hard time correcting itself quick enough to capture those things to make it a relevant tool. So in the intraday, any kind of catalyst or event just uh, makes your TA obsolete for that day. When you zoom out, the events tend to blend in a little bit better. And they're less noisy. You know what I'm saying? Like if the momentum's all the way up, then all of a sudden somebody tweets something and market drops, no indicator would have known that or will react to that. And even worse, they'll be delayed when they do react to it. Right? If you're using history of price, it's just the history of averages. That's how math works, right? So when you zoom in, uh, the delay will be bad when events happen, when sh spontaneous shifts or changes in direction happen. Or if you, you know, or somebody fat fingers or drops a trade or somebody gets a margin call, right? The more you zoom out, the more that stuff blends in and goes away. Yeah. So this is a, this is definitely a downward day out the door. Y'all see how this works? It's working right now.
smash that like button, everybody. So I know I I know I talk a heavy. I make fun of a certain style of trading. I'm not really making fun of TA in general. TA is great if you know what you're doing, but you have to know what you're doing. But in that same argument, everything's great if you know what you're doing, which is true. There is no magic um, sauce recipe of price action that is better than the other. They're all equally good if you like them, if, or all equally bad if you hate them. They're all the same. The minor differences between them give you a little bit more information packed in the punch, but they all have the same effect. The more you zoom out, the better they are. The more you zoom in, the noisier they are. They can't react to catalysts, but nothing can. Like rock skipper can't. Nothing can predict the randomness of human behavior. We fail to do that. Everyone fails to do that. But the problem is, is that people weren't satisfied with the basicness and started making fun of it, and then created more advanced versions of the same noisy mess, like this stuff right here. Like you come in here, Elliot waves and like, like triangle pattern, three drives, like like this, right? This right here. And they're like, trust me guys, don't look at those basic lines that cross over. Look at this more sophisticated thing. It's got more shapes and more colors and more numbers. And it's probably more mathematically sound than the last thing. Don't listen to those, you know, simple cavemen in there. Look at this amazing thing. Look how much more sophisticated. And it's the same thing. Literally the same thing. It's numbers, shapes, patterns. It's the same effectiveness. So a TA just got infinitely more complex for the same effectiveness, I promise. But people would, as the years went by, 80s, 90s, 2000s, started diving into more and more, I guess, sophisticated look on the surface, but not any more sophisticated mathematics. There, it's just more detailed pattern recognition. Like instead of looking for two lines across over now, it's looking for patterns of triangles and squares and, I don't know, time cycles. Like, I don't know, there's probably... If this list where you probably see something like sunspots, moon spots, horoscope, year of the dragon, whatever. You know, there's some shit for everything out there, I promise. But the complexity that's added does not give you more sophistication in your analysis. It is the same inputs or price and past price and past price levels and outputs are possible pivots in the market. It's the same effect. So like I said, they're all equally good. You're not getting any better analysis the more you add to that. They're good for what they're worth, which is good. They're just good. And if you're a good trader, they will be amazing for you. If you're a bad trader, they'll be a not that good. Okay, I just closed my short 1700 bucks profit. I just shorted to here um, five contracts from open to there. It's a pretty simple day trade. I did it on my phone. Um, so that was pretty... Well, Turn spaces. But I, I don't I want to dog it like TA is terrible. TA is great. You have to be good to understand what you're looking at. It can alert you of good and bad things. Like there are some indicators out there that I buy, I think are great, but they actually are programmed with complexity. It's not like the same thing a million times over. It's designed to show you things that are statistically relevant. And then you just have to know how to operate within them. I'm on my laptop. So if I open things, you're going to see like my passwords and stuff. I don't want you guys to see the, the naughty websites I look at when I'm on vacation on my laptop. It's near business. Okay. Okay, Matt. Okay. I'm just kidding. Hold on one second. I'll, sh I'll show you guys after the, after the stream. So I'm holding, I'm holding my phone and doing spaces. I got my, my little tiny... I got my little tiny uh, monitor to the left. I just closed out my short scalp. S&P futures, I made about $1,800 profit. Uh, this is a pretty textbook play with resilience being negative, right? I showed about the integrity of the gap not being that great. This is what Rocket Scooter is all about. Um, don't look at you know what you want to see. Look at what is. You can see the market gapped up and the integrity was just really bad on both the S&P and NASDAQ. And the tech carrying the market with both of them looking low, we just know it's going to trade back. It's probably going to go lower. Um, I'm just on vacation, so my, my commitment to the day is going to be really light. So I just want to get a quick scalp in and out. Um, we did fill a gap. S&P had like a 422-ish level. Um, I think it was a 
gap fill at some point. And once we hit that gap, um, resilience is one of the best tools. I, I taught a class on this last week. We call it our Swiss Army knife. It's used for entries, exits, false breaks. You guys remember the first thing I said was today's likely a false break. Nailed it. I mean, it's like I'm not waking up. Um, and I, I think Adam said, Adam was actually the first to say it. And I think that what we're looking for is this hedge pressure interaction. Um, and as the day progresses, like I think we might close at this 420 and a half. So a rock scooter is the platform that's designed to kind of make all their platforms obsolete. What we show you is positional risk. We show you where market makers are positioned, where bulls and bears are positioned. This analysis alone has replaced technicals for me 100%. Trying to chase trends and patterns is not what I do. I look where positions are. I look for very simple indications. The integrity of the gap was really weak. Within two minutes, those green candles going up, I said was false break. Um, this resilience number says we're probably coming right back down. As, as Wolf and I said this morning, we look for this hedge pressure every day. It's one of the major interaction points. And this is a quick, easy see that the market's likely to trade back a little bit. So I wake up every morning, we look at these numbers. We look at, you can do this for anything that has um, options. So basically all US stocks for the most part, we can do some kind of analysis in the same way. Um, it does show that the market still has bullishness, right? When I said all things are pointing up. However, this resilience number was pointing down. So when you have competing signals, it tells you there's opportunities. You might go up. And then we might come down, then we might go up and hold. So today's going to be like a, a nice day with some big, big runs, right? I'm not looking to short it to the ground. I very rarely short. It's probably the, th the third time I've shorted all year. Everyone in my stream is like, wow, Matt shorted. That's crazy. Because uh, I re very rarely do um, in this environment, not since like last October. And so uh, looking at just looking at the chart, it's really easy to see that the market wants to pull back. But this uh, hedge pressure is one of the strongest uh, pivots that we do have. And so there's a very strong support at 420 and a half on the S&P today. So everybody keep your, your eyes peeled there. And every day we, we do like Zoom calls and stuff at Rocket Cedar Group. We teach how these indications work. It's the, it's the next gen of, of tools for traders. So we're glad you guys come to these spaces. We love y'all to death. And I'm on vacation, so I'm not going to be here too, too long. But um, we'll probably, you know, if you guys come every day, we do Zoom calls after my live YouTube show. And y'all are welcome to tune in. Ashton does a live thing every day. Speaking of Ashton, what's up, man? To your hand raise. Man, that, uh, yeah, talking about your short thing, uh, that is as, that's as plain as it gets because I'm looking at our uh, irrational alerts and everything is bad. Do you think about the, getting the triple laptop screen? Um, I, um, I know what you're talking about. Uh, I only need two screens. The only reason I don't have everything set up the way I normally do today is because I had to rush around to go get my, um, to go find a, a cable. I need a USB C cable to plug this in. And I, I was like a photo finish. By the time I got it plugged in, the stream was starting. So I have to go open everything and log into everything and and uh like that would take five or ten minutes. I don't want to make you guys wait. But I know what you're talking about like fold out from both sides. Um I like that, but what I have right now is a um I got one of those ASUS portable um i think it's 15 or something inch but it's also a touch screen so i can draw on the screen um which is really nice but i forgot to turn on my drawing tools oh hey what's up what's up cedo claudemir it's good to see you man yeah we're visiting family for the um for the holiday all right, so if you guys envision this, right? DD's coming in strong, maintain the bull side. We're going to try to fall, I think, a little bit, but I think the market, there's a long opportunity here. Nice little V shape. Be careful for any hedge pressure breaks. I mean, we really we hit that upper DD band. Um, I think that today, to be honest, if there is any upside, it's going to be scalpy. So even if I do buy dips, I'm going to get in and get out, get in and get out. I'm not going to buy dips for a continual rally. Like I said, I think that today ends up closing closer to here um, more than anything. Just remember DD being greater than half. We have a couple of pivots that are worth something. Um, the middle is going to want to pivot up. Bear side is going to want to kiss bull side, things like that. There's a wave in here on the upside on the way down if there's a down day today. Okay, I'm going to get me a, a snack real quick. Right back.
we know for um you know normally what you do on a scalp like this is um two steps right so we know that hedge pressure is in the middle of we have so many videos um that go over different techniques to use one of my favorite ones is that resilience critic hedge pressure breaks I, iwm just flagged red so be careful on a hedge break to the downside but anytime you have hedge pressure in between open and close, you know that the desire to fill the gap is stronger than the desire to hold hedge pressure, right? We know how the ranking works. Right, so we have, I'm gonna eat some chips, so don't. It's loud, I'm sorry. So the desire for the S&P to fill its gap is going to be likely a hedge pressure break on the downside. So we have S&P and IWM both trying to do it. I'm going to be smacking y'all's ears today. Hold on. Let me pull up. Okay, let's check this out right here. Um, if you look at the TFF report in the bottom, you can see this. Um, the dealers still have a net positive position. Asset managers still growing in a net long. Um, how... Which data point? Oh, that's the 20 seconds. So this is an updating the new data point. Uh, let me pull up the CME group one. I don't think bar chart has updated. Oh, doesn't it? Wait, it comes out at like noon, I thought. It's not released yet for today. This is the old. Yeah, we don't have the new data, the new data point yet. Uh, barbecue lays, leftover from the party. Nothing too exciting. I checked the Celsius. I've been trying to go wide on caffeine, so I'm like ultra sensitive to caffeine right now. I chugged the Celsius a little bit ago on an empty stomach. I'm going to use something on that. I'm literally gonna get high off of this caffeine. So I started trying to like, you know, reduce my blood pressure. So I'm, I'm going lighter on caffeine and partying like less hard. <laughs> Sounds like it, so yeah. My laptop is not directional mic like my little mic is. Your brother has to play Xbox, map smacking chips. Okay, I'll meet the mic. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to cut out caffeine for the most part, almost all the way. Which is like uh, slowly weaning off. So I don't like it's been it's been it's been hella helpful. And I've been noticing like I take like a couple sips of coffee and I'm just like wired for the day. That's all that's how it is when you don't drink coffee every day anymore. I know. You guys are on something. I agree with you, John. Jace has his daily chai tea latte. That sounds lovely and refreshing. Okay. This is the IDVM has first hedge break. One of the things to note, if you guys remember, when you're looking at the priority system of what we read, DD, resilience, liquidity map. Liquidity map says one thing. Resilience can override that. DD can override that. Those are... That's textbook week one stuff at Rock Scooter. As I said, we're likely to interact with hedge pressure and bounce. It's probably the first bounce on the way up. Uh, so trading from here to here was the appropriate trade. I just closed my short right there. I'm going to squeeze out maybe five more points. <laughs> Does Dan Jimmy Dean breakfast sandwiches? 
I know, but they're so good. I'm addicted to them. But I'm not, I'm not eating those anymore either. I'm going through a, I'm about to go through this, a hardcore phase of, um, I have a trainer, a buddy of mine's going to train me. So I'm going to go through like a, a new health wave thing. So I'm, I'm starting to purge before I get started with that. I'm going to train for a marathon this year. I'm going to do a lot of stuff. And then Half-Life of Caffeine is six hours. I know. I wonder if I can get another play on DPSD here. I saw some uh, 450 cover calls. I, I wanted to sell some Do you have 450 cover calls that you sold?
looking at monthly maps right now. Yep. Yep. Okay. And you guys can see that the bears are just fleeing their positions. Got some pretty steep slope there. So that's, uh, that, that, um, uh, basically gives me another layer of confirmation for bullishness for the next month on riot. So I actually have to submit it for a call down this red on riot for the July contract. So I like what I see. Yeah, let me actually tweet this. Uh, I'll tweet the link on uh, Matt and Rocket Sphere if you guys want. So we live stream every morning. So as everybody's talking about these stickers, I'll pull them up so that we can actually uh, show you what we see while you guys are here so you can get the cool audio on the space and then some visuals to go with it. So give me one second. Y'all can turn around. So let me pull right up. Yeah, so that's a, that's a great example of what Ashton was talking about. It just shows you um, where bears and bulls are positioned as time goes on. So essentially right now, you know, right's a great example of just, the, I mean, this is just classic um, two side squeeze. You have the, the bear, or sorry, two side um, bulls getting more bullish, bears getting less bearish. And when you see it like that, uh, the monthly maps have showed this particular pattern since October of last year which is why we were so successful at calling a bottom and maintaining the market was bullish when all the fundamentalists were like, but inflation, but QT, but rate hikes. And you're like, yeah, but it's not, markets don't crash on those, those pretenses, right? Markets crash when a bubble pops and the bubble popped. The bubble, you remember it was, was called um, monkey pictures and crypto. You guys remember that stuff? That bubble popped and everyone that was exposed to that kind of went under and the stock market survived. There's really no bubble left to pop, right? So it's going to be a mild recession. The bear market's going to be bearish. It's going to have to trade its way lower, uh, but it doesn't just fall under its own weight. And I've traded through enough crashes myself, being in this business long enough, you see that the market just doesn't topple under its own weight unless big companies go bankrupt or massive layoffs happen or, or both or some bubble pops, right? And we, we, we survived the crypto bubble collapse that collapsed some banks and, and the bigger banks gobble them up. And this is this is typically what you see. And as long as the bigger banks aren't collapsing under their own weight, the market's good. So we're pretty much good. There's no bubble that's going to crash this market to pop. It's going to have to slowly and build up something to collapse or just risk has to become really big. And, you know, typically you're going to have to see failures somewhere. So while we're in a bear market, yes. Are we going to collapse under its own weight? No. Can the market trade up for a year and then trade down for a couple more years? Absolutely. It's very common. There were times in, I mean, if like I think 1940 to 1970, the stock market didn't break new highs or lows for like 30 years. Most people that are new to trading are just used to seeing market with momentum. And that's not normal. Um, you know, markets don't always have massive momentum. Sometimes markets can go sideways for a long time and i think we very well could be in an environment like that despite the bearish fundamentals um inflation is not terrible it's bad but it's not terrible stock market's not collapsing people are starting to realize it's probably a safe place to put their money uh because it it's less of a fire than inflation it burns it up faster right so people are just parking their money and you're going to see that for a while and monthly maps show that it shows people's desire to to buy every dip they can because losing, you know, no percent this year in the stock market's better than losing four and a half, five percent just from your cash burning up. So, you know, and, and, and fixed income, not necessarily, you know, everyone's favorite bet now either. Monthly maps show this. It shows people's desire to be long in a lower spot. It shows desire for bears to get out of their bear positions in the future. So we can map out as far out as you have options. Right is a great example of how rapidly people are willing to buy this dip. Markets consolidating right for the last couple of weeks. I'm looking at, uh, or actually since April, and you can just see that it looks like riots breaking out to the upside. And monthly map is painting out that picture. Uh, the bulls strengthening their position, bears are weakening their position. It's showing that sentiment change. Uh, so this is a genuine bull market, believe it or not. This is not just short-term mechanics. There are people buying stuff and going long. That's the definition of bull market. Um, how long does it last? Well, that's the art form, right? And we, even with monthly maps, we can forecast in the future when that desire changes. And when you look at the index products, you can see right now, uh, the S&P, like I said earlier, has that bullishness mentality all the way through mid-July. So I, what I'm forecasting is we're going to trade up slowly like we are. A few breakouts, you know, a few momentum runs. This, this to me isn't going to be like 
three or four weeks of green candles on top of green candles. It's going to be consolidate, break up, trade down for a week or two, consolidate, break up. It's going to keep working its way higher. And then when those bearish fundamentals start to kind of build up, right, you have QT coming in. Um, the Fed's still having some things, you know, rate hikes possibly still. Um, the markets, and then of course, unemployment's high, production's down, uh, productivity's down, you know, sales are down. Things are bad fundamentally. That takes time. And so it's all about gauging when the market's going to pivot and turn down. And so we might still have a bull run till the summer, and we might have bearishness towards the end of the year. I think it's pretty common for this uh, type of environment that we're in to see strong bull waves in the middle of a slower bear decline. Uh, monthly map shows that this is one of the rocket scooters major tools it's it's a fan favorite here and uh you guys are welcome to come check it out uh, take a look at it i kind of talked for long enough let, let someone else have a chance at the mic i'm not making any more trades so i close my shorts so i'm pretty pretty chill for today are y'all doing anything anyone yeah well i do agree man it's like you said it's pretty crazy we were calling this out 420. 20.5 Everybody that's been sitting here since the open heard that right at the open. And if you take a look on the chart, the worst price. Y'all can hear me. Two, I'm not muted. Two, four, twenty point four two. We were within eight cents there. And you can see the bounce is pretty clean right off that. that so, nice Wait, am I muted? Check, check. I mean, really like clockwork. Oh, oh yeah, I'm talking in space. Sorry. I think, oh, I was, I muted because I was eating chips. It keeps unmuting for some reason. I'm trying to mute so y'all can hear me snap smacking my chips, but I must must have clicked it twice. All right. <clears throat> really freaking bullish. That's all I can say. Uh, that's like kind of massive open, by the way. Was up like almost, I think it was like, uh, Is Spy Monthly Map not working for you too? Yeah, that's weird. That's we have single dates. Uh, and found some of them, so I would be looking for that one. Uh, really for like a, a back half game. I'm so odd. Uh, again, I'd be really, really. Uh, um, what is today? So May the 30th? Yeah, that's really odd. We have all the single dates. No, no. There must be. Um, Ash's classes. Okay, so if you guys, they're all on the Discord. If you don't have or see something that uh, that you're looking for, it's likely that your package doesn't. So we, we divide everything up into like Pro and Pro Plus. We don't put every in the free trial. We put the entire boot camp, right, or the extended trial. It's because there's so much information. We want to make sure that you know, you're you're not just going like a thousand directions when you first check it out. So most of his classes are going to be in the Pro Plus unlock. So once you unlock that, 
you should be able to see them. Yep. So that's weird that Spy is not drawing about the maps and display issue. We got through NVIDIA earnings as well as retail earnings. Let me see if I can't share with you guys some cool stuff related to trading. Okay. Can I show you all this? Hold on. Oh, I can't show you all this because it has the names. It has, oh, it has secret names on it. I can't show it. Let me see what I can. Uh, Is Pro Plus the same as Extend? No, so the Pro Plus is the actual um, um, subscription pack. So essentially, there's like, we have three layers here. There's Lite, which essentially is just essentially Discord access plus the smaller app, the Lite app, which is good for people that just want, you know, you want your hedge pressure every day. It doesn't have charting features or anything or a scanner, but you can still be part of the community and it covers your data feeds, and that's the Lite package. Um, the popular packages are in the Pro, Pro, Pro Plus. And so the difference is right now, nothing in the platform. In the future, Pro Plus will have more features in the platform, like trading, live trading. Once this comes out in about a month, will be a Pro Plus only feature. The extended trial, we might allow some of the parts of that. But when you finally upgrade, you, you have Pro and Pro Plus as an option. Um, Pro will have features that Pro Plus doesn't, or Pro Plus will have features Pro doesn't. It's just different price points because they unlock different things. So we might have like higher costs for like data feeds and other things needed to, uh, to unlock other things. But in the Discord, the education is different as well. So Pro Plus gives you more, gives you essentially your advanced continual education. And I'll just tell you, that's the popular option. 90, high 90s percentile, everyone, everyone pretty much goes Pro Plus because it's not that much more expensive than Pro. Um, so the main difference now would be education. So most of Ashton stuff is like pro plus on the platform gives you additional bang for your buck. So a whole bunch more classes, very option specific swing and investment specific classes, tons of stuff, monthly maps classes. Um, so you just upgraded. Oh, just message, um, message slacks. He'll get you your roles. Either one of us will get it. We actually just created a Discord bot. It should be launched this week. The Discord bot is going to connect to your Rocket Scooter platform. Actually, you're going to have a button down here, Connections. You'll be able to connect Discord to Rocket Scooter. And the, the, the cool thing about our platform is, like I said, we're starting to really release information to the public about our platform plans because I have, I have very rarely revealed a lot of the bigger things we've worked on. Because, of course, we're trying to maintain a huge competitive advantage here. One of the things we're going to do is have this interconnectability to so many things, um, Discord being one of them. So you'll, you'll be able to connect your Rocket Scooter account to your Discord account. What that'll do is immediately auto-assign your roles, just like now, John. Like you'd immediately get access to the things you want. It would immediately change your curriculum stuff on your website, specific to the roles that you have uh, on Discord and, of course, the package you bought your experience would change. And then of course, connecting the rocket scooter to your discord, which means that you'd be able to go just on the fly. You may be at work. You want to know like, Oh crap, what was hedge pressure? You would go to discord and type like exclamation point spy. And it would check to make sure you have the role in the data feed already. Cause you have to entitle the data feeds to give you access, which connects to your account. And you'd be able to get all your information. Like the bot could spit out a nice little info and a DM to you and spy. Oh, here's the hedge pressure. Here's where it's going. It's pulling up. Boom. And that's what we're building right now. So you'll be able to interact with Rocks here, even through Discord, things like that. So imagine, you know, you're on the fly, you know, you're, you're running from meeting to meeting and you're like, oh, my alarm's just went off. Okay. What's the liquidity map on Apple? You can go message the bots. And we say like Rocket Scooter AI and the AI does not just meaninglessly put in there. We're using AI features to do different things. Like the robot would eventually be able to give analysis of what's going on. The robot will say, you know, DD is bullish. 
resilience is negative and less than negative 10. And these are the different uh, lights that are turned on and off in the alerts. Probabilities uh, X percent that Bulong upholds hatch pressure based on the last 100 iterations of this back test, blah, blah, blah. And then the, the robot would give you like a one paragraph analysis of the stock you want to look at. That's where we're going. We're, that's a project that's been working kind of in secret for a while, but that's coming out very soon. Uh, the Discord bot, the first thing it's going to do is connect to your platform and connect your walls on Discord. The immediate, that same group, as soon as that's done, will be using Discord for advanced analytical features to connect Rocket Scooter to your Discord experience. And now you can take Rocket Scooter stuff on the fly. So I mean, that's not cool, right? Down the road, imagine you get the analysis. Analysis looks great. And you're like, oh, I like that. Okay. And, um, long. You can say, like, okay, I'm long Apple. Maybe I should move my stop. And then you would go in there and do exclamation point, stop, space, move, space, 50, space, this price, whatever. Then it'll move your stop in your platform on your live trading from a command you can put in Discord using Discord bot. So imagine having connectability anywhere, not just Discord, but everywhere, your trading platforms, especially connected to your experience in Rocket Scooter, things like that. I showed off top RDZ was sick with negative rest. Quran knows that's that's completely textbook. So we're excited to create like essentially an experience unlike any other uh, in the trading industry. So to have connectability, and again, Rocket Scooter eventually will also have a mobile app. That'll be the easiest way for you to get mobile features. Irrational, so it's correct that bull zone support is not that reliable. Uh, let's talk about it. Okay, the first and foremost thing that you'll notice is that when you break through hedge pressure, there's no trading that I take at all. Breaking through hedge pressure, nothing's reliable. Everything turns off, first and foremost. Now, even if you're <coughs> irrational markets, it's reliable if I think that's bullish enough, which I give it like a 60% or higher, which 82 is still good enough to show that it's it can possibly support. But because we break hedge pressure along the way, then I don't take action. I sit out. So what if hedge pressure was way down here, right? And you fall and break bull zone support and hedge pressure, and that was 82. Would I long up a hedge pressure? Yeah, because I'd long from it going at least from here to there. Remember the probabilities are if you open in the bull zone without a catalyst um, and without hedge pressure break being considered the reason for a rational market. So without a catalyst, without VIX breaking risk interval rules, things like that, 96% of the time you close at the same place you open in zones. So bull zone is likely to close at bull zone 96.6% of the time and the back test on SPY. Again, that's a back test to take care of the grain of salt. Um, and this is, again, those are old numbers based on the back test we did years ago when we first did this. Bear zone is likely to stay in the bear zone. Mean reversion is likely to stay in mean reversion. It's closed, not action ability, but closed. We measured where it opened, where it closed under those conditions. And it was overwhelmingly saying that the market's just resilient to its own. It stays where it is. It doesn't really change day after day. But those three or 4% of the time, you'd have a catalyst that kicks the market the other way. And with 20 trading days a month, you know, That's like one day a month, there's a major catalyst that reverses the market against structure, which makes sense, right? You know, in a bear market, we're probably seeing catalysts every two or three days, two or two or three times a week. Um, but in a bull market, I mean, very rarely you'd have a market changing catalyst. And those stats are also from a non bear market as well. But we like to say that it's overwhelmingly, you know, probabilistic. So it's likely to want to stay in the bull zone more than go to the bear zone. Trading to the bear zone would be the rarer case, but doesn't mean it's impossible. If I were to long on bull zone support, I'd have to build a case for it. So if it were to fall to bull zone, my case is I'm going to trade the next resistance, right? Because there's a hedge pressure break, irrational. If you trade irrational with the lights red, the rules are trade very small and trade only the next resistance. Your next resistance is literally hedge pressure. There's no sign. Hold on. 
So, right. So there is limited upside on that trade anyways, right? You see that? So as Colin has said, I really wouldn't have any upper direction to pick. I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have anywhere to go with resilience being negative. So it's like only going to fish, you know, or throw my line out and reel a fish right to there. And it's going to probably continue to trade down. Another thing to take a look at. Um, so when irrational, the rules are don't trade. If you're, well, again, okay, I can't tell you what to do. My rules are I don't trade. If any of these lights are red, especially hedge break, hedge break. If you use discretion, like I still want to trade or I'm in a swing position of blah, blah, blah. Then the, the rule is trade very, very, very small. I mean, the market's going to be a little more random and harder to gauge when irrational signals are there. So if you do discretionarily trade, like I'm repeating myself, it's trade very, very, very small and only trade to the next resistance if you find one. So it's like scalp city. So, you know, here to here is basically the distance. There's really not a lot of, you know, meat on that bone. Even best case scenario, it tries to make its way back up. With resilience being negative, half gap is resistance. It's going to be pushing down here all day long. DD is going to be a force that's going to try to bring it up this way. Resilience is a force that's going to push it down that way. So likely the case is... Um, we close more often than not somewhere inside of here. If DD is negative, we're going to try to push down here. That bull zone rule is likely to maintain here, but you know breaking can happen because it's irrational. Um, any bear zone tap is likely to kiss the bull zone. So there's usually a scalp from bear zone to bull zone as long as DD is positive. There's a dangerous scalp in a bear market or sorry, a sell off market. So scalps today, like if, if we were to fall through here and fall right down to there, um, and uh, DD was still bullish, which it is, right? 60% went irrational. Okay, check. Bear zone to bull zone scalp is a very common play, and it's very easy to do because there's a 10 point stop below here. And as long as there's a 10 point run or more, I, I can take it. So there's 10 to 10. It's a one to one scalp against the herd. Maybe not appetizing enough for some traders here. They probably don't want such a small reward or risk, but it's always a chance because when DD is bullish, open a bull zone. It wants to stay in the bull zone, but even if you break, it's going to likely test it as, as resistance to continue its path down. That is such a common move. Um, on those rare cases where I said three or 4% that you end up closing bear zone when you open bull zone and spy. And again, those, those results are just for spy. So the idea is um, there's a potential scalp from here to there on that 96% rule, I call it. There is a tiebreaker at a liquidity pocket from here to there, but again, such a small travel, not really worth taking. Um, bull zones are likely to support more often than it resists. Uh, however, when markets are irrational, we don't trust that rule as much as you have said. You nailed, you nailed it. All of it's there. How do we know we're irrational near the open? Uh, we weren't. Um, except for the, the DD band touch. The minute you break through DD, um, the market's irrational to the upside. And so you have a little bit of randomness. The, the reason I knew we were selling off is because within minutes, um, resilience just went negative and we gapped up. And that's a very, as Karan had said, right? This is a pretty textbook. Karan's kind of an expert in our stuff. The short at the top of the redistribution was sick with negative resilience. That is literally textbook resilience. And we went over the resilience video on Thursday, right? Last week. So, you know, if you're trading up in here, all those lights were green. I was textbook. There was no, my confidence in that trade was like 100%. The S&P wants to go to at least half gap or lower. With hedge pressure in the way, I knew there's going to be some kind of bouncy bounce, right? Which is why I closed my short right there. I just traded from here to half gap. This is extremely textbook. I got in, got out, made 1800 bucks, and I haven't touched it since. Yeah, similar analysis with Houston. Oh. So essentially you have to look at all the pieces and try to be as creative as you can. Um, QQQ has a little bit of a stronger case for the sell-off because there's no support in the way. It's going to try to hold the bull zone, like we said. You know, DD represents the S&P stocks. We know you're still going to have bullish DD and S&P. S&P is likely to lift the NASDAQ a little bit as well. We don't have a NASDAQ DD. You could probably make one, but we know that the S&P calls the shots. Um, resilience is both being negative. It means the S&P is going to likely fill its gap and NASDAQ is likely to be pulled along with it. 
So today, Nasdaq is likely to trade to here. Because of BD being bullish, it's likely they want to attempt a run at the bull zone. And when this move happens, this one is going to V up right here, likely. When this happens, we're going to consult these again to see if this is resistance or this is support. When the markets are irrational, this can have a delayed effect if the index is moving first. So take it with a grain of salt. But it's bearish enough. 25% and 35% on the negative side. It would be the rarest in the rare for this to rally today with these numbers just in decline. So this is likely to sell and, and probably work its way lower today. Oh. So normally what I do when I'm shorting against such a strong bull signal, I get in and get out the first resistance. Anytime I go against the herd, I don't trade for breakouts in bear markets like this. I'm sorry, bull markets like this. Um, I don't short for collapses, even though it, if you break hedge pressure, it could collapse. I just take it, the gimme trade, which is here to here. That's such an obvious trade, right? Resilience is negative. This is textbook. You're, you're going to at least try to be below here. So I trade it from here to here. That's the easiest scalp to make. Same thing if resilience is positive and you're down here. I trade from here to there if it's going against a bear signal. If it's a bull signal and we're down here and resilience is a really good delay, then I, I'll, I'll trade it to the other end of the box. But with this being good, strong, long signals here and bullishness there, the gap mechanics just so there's enough market cap trying to pull it down when you got everything else trying to pull it up. So you can see how it's trying to fall, but it's also trying not to fall at the same time. Bull, bull, bear, competing signals. Ultimately, filling the gap is likely to supersede resilience because, I mean, supersede liquidity map. That's how they, the, the priorities are. DD is the highest priority. Resilience is the second highest. And liquidity map is the third. So liquidity map shows bull likely to support, which is true. Resilience says, well, it's likely to pull back here. So you're going to have a probably a quick fall there to test as a possibility. Ultimately, it's likely going to want to hold there. So Nasdaq's going to probably have the same fate of the S&P. It's likely to close probably somewhere in here the rest of the day. So liquidity map flux signals fluctuate. It, the liquidity map doesn't fluctuate. I'm um, saying that the zones and the hedge pressures don't fluctuate. The liquidity map letters change because price moves to a different zone. So the idea is that whenever you wake up, wherever you are, you can see currently where you're trading. So if this were to move here, then you'd be in mean reversion. Um, just to show you kind of where you are at that moment in time. You can't seem to get into an, the Apex website. Ooh. That's not good. Maybe check your email. Oh yeah, Norseman, watch the resilience video. Yeah, it's a good one. It's actually, okay, if you guys go to the Discord, there's a new series called Platform Tutorials. One second. Yeah, no Quick. DM really quick. I'll share where to go. Hold on. Okay. 
Uh, if you go into the Discord, there's we have the boot camp, which is like the trader training section. But then we have uh, RS tutorials. So under platform help, there there's a, a video basically on each major topic, just one video instead of like a deep divey boot camp. It's like there's a liquidity map video, monthly map video, scanner video, resilience tutorial. Uh, there'll be like a DD one liquidity DD one next. So essentially, it's it's a um, kind of like the quickest path I'd say to kind of get yourself immersed in the content, just like an overview of each thing with all the things in it. You know, when we filmed DD, we really broke it down to kind of like drill people on it, which is why. There's multiple videos, and that's why it's boot camp. I kind of invest a little more time in that. Look at this. Oh, that's a socks pants. Socks here. But it, it's so cool to see this kind of happen in, in the midst of a quantity of tight excitement. So I think that's what's really interesting of this one in particular versus, I guess, really any other kind of emerging uh, sector you would see. Is we're seeing this one in the midst of this QT cycle, you know, rates of 5%, where you kind of have industrial tapping in the same place that you would expect people to be flowing into in this rate environment.
<clears throat> probably going to call it a day. Um, it's a pretty decent, you know, easy scalp out the door. Nothing else to talk about. Uh, I am on vacation, so very low probability that we'll have a Zoom call today. Um, well, I should be back tomorrow. So, uh, same. I'll probably wake up, stream, then hit the road and be home tomorrow afternoon. We'll be back to normal on Thursday. Uh, you're new, so FX new. Have you signed up for the extended trial yet? DD is one of the most powerful tools that we have. Um, what it is is an aggregate. Okay, so let me let me challenge you to take a look at the platform. So let me type let me type something. I want all you guys to just write this link down if you want to try it out and join our Discord today. And we you can watch all the videos on it, but also I'll give you a little blurb on what it is. You guys need to check this out because this is this is by far the best thing ever we've done for pricing. Thirty five dollars a month for that for the one ninety nine package. So you basically come in um, at what eighty three percent off, right? You can check out everything, watch all the videos in the boot camp uh, to train on all these things, and this gives you access to the platform, access to the Discord, access to your data feeds, everything for thirty five bucks. And you get the full training, all that stuff comes with it. Um, and for, we give you that price for three months just to check it out. Um, you can learn how uh, DD, resilience, all those things work. Um, my laptop's having a brain fart right now. Um, but essentially, DD on the top of the screen, as you see. Let me refresh my platform here really quick. Um, <clears throat> the top of the screen. So what it does, it says is that 81% of the market cap of the S&P is trading in what's called a bull zone. So despite um, the S&P pulling back, the majority of the, the stocks or the market cap of the S&P is also maintaining each one of their own bull zones. So if I like look at an Apple, for instance, right? Let's pull up any stock. You can see how what Rocket Scooter shows you affects is that you have a bull zone and a bear zone. These are described as being where... Um, market makers have distributed risk where essentially we're where bulls and bears are split this way um as like a line in the sand that's how you can see it and so as you see apple is trading inside of its own bull zone clearly um with 82 percent of all the market cap in the bull zone you can start just throwing random stocks in there and seeing that they're likely in a bull zone as well jp also in a bull zone um so the idea is, is that if the majority of the market cap of the S&P is maintaining a bull zone, then it would be very weird for the SPY, which tracks the sum of the stocks inside of it, to end up in a bear zone when the other things are bullish, right? So it's it, it detects those kind of opportunities to know that SPY traded down, but it's going to try to at least maintain a bull side on its own because it has its own supply and demand. Yes, it'll trade down, but at the end of the day, it's going to want to attach itself to the stocks. And with the stocks being very strongly bullish still and supporting a bull zone, we know that most of the time when that's the case, the S&P doesn't end up in a bear zone if the stocks are in a bull zone. And that's the easiest way to see it affects you. So it looks at those arbitrage opportunities. As you see, as the S&P is trying to trade down, you can see how there's just this little, there's like this little magic float right here that's kind of at least fighting it off of that break. You see that? And, and this shows you that, that potential there. We talked about that today. Now, is it actionable? It certainly is like longing off of the bull zone because that's very bullish is actionable, but only under certain conditions. Well, I take that. Today's one of those conditions I don't take it because this indicator tells me that this dash line is resistance as well. So when you put the two together, this indicator is telling me that the bull zone is support and spy. This white line is telling me this dash line is resistance and spy. And look at what it's doing, sandwiching in between those two places. So there's no real good trade setup today, um, but it's very easily predictable to see how we kind of squished two two very strong forces are throwing this uh, instrument right at that little nexus point between all of it, right? Does that make sense, FX? So this is an aggregate similar to that. 
And this is an aggregate of what's happening inside of the gaps of the stocks. So gap up, gap down. Um, you have a redistribution zone between the two. And this is that aggregate of the stocks themselves inside of the box, just like this is an aggregate of the stocks, bull zone or bear zone. So the stocks themselves are actually gapping up and fading their gap, which is pulling down. And so the S&P gapping and going wouldn't make sense if the stocks are fading their gap to the downside, which is why I shorted from here to there. Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah no problem. Okay. All right, you guys. I'm going to call it a day. I love y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you go grab that platform. Just try just check it out. It's 35 bucks is like... That's like a, like a drink at a bar. Like two drinks at a bar. You chill for a month and learn as much about the stock market as your heart's content. When I get back to my vacay, I love you guys. Thanks for coming in. We'll see you all tomorrow. No fancy exit music, but go to our Discord. The link is below. Check out the extended trial. Link is below. Like I said, this is the greatest uh, entry point into Rocket Scooter you'll have. You can learn all of our tools. Um, we've removed the need for multi time frame confluence. No longer do you have to balance eight, ten different charts to look at a ticker. I never changed. I never changed this right here at all. Um, unless I'm running a monthly map future. So one chart, one instrument, everything's automatically populated for me. I make all my decisions off of these couple of lines here, and that's it. Um, this is a brand new style of analysis called positional risk. We'll show you where Wall Street's position, major institutions are positioned and market makers are hedging for zero risk options or that they're uh, or zero risk positions that they engage in options trades with as part of like the overall position. All those fancy words just basically mean you can draw lines between some of these levels and, and very accurately see where high volume pivots can be uh, before they happen. We print all this at 930. All this information is here, hedge pressure being one of our major pivots. You can see this massive volume spike on my screen when you touch it. Each one of these lines predicts high volume before they happen because there is some robotic forced hand hedging that takes place here every time. I can't predict the stock market which way it goes up or down, but I know I take bets based on which way the big three indicators point. Um, and so I can find pivots and plan a trade before I make a trade. I'm not chasing a trend. I'm trading what is. Uh, and trying to be first in and first out, which is one of the best things to do as a trader is to try to see things before other people see it. And it really makes a lot of sense. So all of our tools are forward-looking, not past-looking. Each one of these looks into the future because options have risk over time. That changes. We monitor that. And we display that for you in a very, very, very cool two-dimensional fashion. People have attempted to and have failed to put this much information in a nice 2D sense it overlays on a chart. This is multiple dimensions of information because it also includes time and changes over time. How do we display that for you? Um, and this is this is how we artistically did it. So it makes it very simple to read. Uh, so give it a shot. We love you guys. And tune in uh, tomorrow. Will be all same thing. Laptop front center in the morning. Love y'all. See you.